Sometimes historical sources can bring to light the unexpected. I'm in Preston in Northwest England to investigate a few sources that reveal some surprising aspects of the fight for women's rights. It all began in 1917 when the men were away at war. There's a lot of heritage in this building behind me. During the early 20th century, it was home to the Dick Care and Co factory. And during the First World War, it was staffed by women who produced ammunition for the war effort. So it was a really important site. But if you just walk around, you'd never know. So we need to look for some sources which are gonna tell us about this important aspect of women's history in the 20th century. The story of women's rights is often told through the suffragettes campaign to win the vote. But sometimes it was about grabbing opportunities when they presented themselves. I've been told that in one of these houses, there's a great source that's gonna help us understand more about the lives of the women who worked in the factory during the war. Hi Gail, Hello. I'm Sam. Hi, Sam. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Gail, I understand you've got an interest in the history of the women who worked at the Dick Care factory. What more can you tell me about them? Well, yes, um, they also formed a, a women's football team um, in 1917. And I have a, a scrapbook um, documenting the history, basically. Would you like to have a look? Yes, please. Yeah. This is the first newspaper article when they played the first game. Fantastic. And, and why did they form the football team? It was initially a patriotic thing to raise money for the wounded soldiers. The girls wanted to do their bit, you know, and, and muck in and do what they could to help. Before World War I, women weren't encouraged to work in jobs usually done by men, let alone play football. But this collection of newspaper sources put together by the manager of the team reveals the Dick Care ladies were a great success. Straight away, this jumps out. Uh, Preston team play before 35,000 people. Down here, there's a cutting from 1921. Big crowd expected at Old Trafford. So they're playing at big grounds. And here we see that there were international matches played by the women as well. French international ladies versus Dick Cares ladies. And they actually won this match 2-0. So what we're getting from the source here is a positive picture of women's football in the early 20th century. But as the memory of the war years began to fade, the women suffered a backlash. Reading between the lines of the newspaper articles and cartoons, we can see that the Dick Care ladies found themselves increasingly undermined. Looking into the scrapbook a bit further, we start to see more negative portrayals of women's football. So here we've got a cartoon and there's some quite sexist imagery in it. Down here, we've got some women crowded around what is the referee, says below. This is what happened every time the ref blew his whistle. We've got a provocative almost image of a woman footballer over here. Down at the bottom of that image, we've even got a little drawing of the ball with the, an arrow next to it saying the ball, as though it's instructing her what she needs to do, as though she's so distracted by her pose, she's kind of forgotten to play the game. Oh, and over here, there were criticisms following the England v France women's football match that the game was dangerous for women and a deterrent to beauty. And we see that there's an even bigger attack this time from the FA, the Football Association, who ban women's football from FA grounds from December 1921. It says they've not attempted to stop it, the women's game. They have not the power to do it, but they've put obstacles in the way of its growth. And this really tells us something about the status of women as well. You know, during the war when they were playing football, it was patriotic and they were drawing in big crowds. It was exciting. But then after the war, once we get into the 1920s, there's this move to make women go back to how they were before. The FA's ban was a huge setback and it wasn't until the late 1960s that women's football began to regain its popularity. But what a surprise to find that in the past, Thousands of people would come to watch women play football, as these sources show. 
When we were at the factory, we knew about the munitions history, but we didn't know anything about its links to the history of women's football. That set of scrapbook sources was such a brilliantly rich archive. We saw that the games were popular. They were drawing in really big crowds. But there was a lot of sexism around as well. So perhaps you've got some sources in your own house that you could use. And who knows what histories you might uncover.